In this 10-minute video tour, I talk in detail about the resources I've included on the page, including the anatomy of a website handout that I created that I use with my students to talk about the different parts of a website, the five W's of website evaluation, 10 questions for fake news detection, and the consumer handbook for fake news, which give questionnaires and important questions for students to ask when viewing websites to determine if the information is valid and useful. And there's also a website with some great lesson plans and lesson ideas. So here we go, on with the tour. Before having students analyze the reliability of content that they see on a website, I feel it's important to teach them a little bit about how websites might be organized, how you find information on a website, and distinguish the different types of information you can find there. So I usually give them this worksheet, um, The Anatomy of a Typical Website, which talks about the different parts of a website that you might see. So we talk about the title of a website, some kind of navigation menu that you may see, and um, a way to get around the website, or some kind of searching to allow you to search the website for information. And then we talk about you know, what the main content posted on that website might look like, and how to distinguish it from any advertising that you might see on a website. It's being able to tell the difference between content and an advertisement. I also talk a lot about the footer area of websites and we talk about um, being able to find out who created the website, what their mission is for that website, what their purpose is. So we usually look at the about this website or the about area or the contact us area. That usually gives us information about the corporation or organization that created the website, what their mission is for the website, and if they may have any bias or leanings with the content that they're producing. So here's a common website a student may encounter looking for medical information. WebMD articles often come up when searching for medical information. And so um, talk to students about here's the navigation area. If you want to browse through the website, you can see here's an article in the main content, and you can click on it and read the article. Um, we talk about the importance of the date of the article when it was created um, to know if that information might be relevant or not, um, and also to distinguish the article part from any advertising that it might appear on the page. And then we also look at, again, that footer area, so scrolling all the way down to the bottom to find more information about the website, who created it, what their purpose is for the website, and they have a, um, a extensive about area, so about WebMD. You can read a lot of information about their content, and then you find that when a website is very forthcoming about their, um, their purpose and how they do their work on the website, it's a little bit easier to trust what information is on that website. But as with all medical information, um, I was glad to see when I read their editorial policy that they do make sure that you know that the information, although they try and make it as reliable as possible and have doctors on their staff, it's never a substitute for professional health care. Um, so it's good when you see a website is very upfront about their um, what their content is, but also the limits of their content. So that um, is an indication of how much trust you can place in the information that is posted there. Once students are comfortable with finding their way around a website and identifying the different parts of a website, then you can start to talk about evaluating the content of the website. Um, is, uh, is the information there um, legitimate? Is it, um, is it truthful? Does it have um, any bias or leanings uh, in that information? And there's a few tools that I use with my students uh, to help them start to answer those questions. This first one, the most basic one, um, is a simple um, five W's of website evaluation. So just questions you can ask when looking at the information. It's created by Kathy Trock, who's a teacher um, who often speaks um, um, on the subject of educational technology. Um, so who who wrote the pages? Are they an expert in that field? Um, is there a biography or information about that author included? Or how can I find more about the author by doing another search? Um, what does the author say is the purpose of the site? 
Um, what else might the author have in mind for the site? So these are good questions to ask. When was the site created? So looking for those dates. Um, how relevant is the information? Um, was it made um, last week, 10 years ago? Might um, influence how relevant that information is. Where does it come from? Who's the sponsor of the site? And another question is why is, this, is the information actually useful for the, my purpose? Does it answer the research questions that I have? Or, um, or is it good information but just not relevant to the thing that I'm actually searching for? Maybe another page might have better information and I should keep looking. One thing that students will encounter a lot nowadays through uh, websites and even through their social media are fake news. So when is something a fake news article and when is it a legitimate news article? How do you tell the difference? And um, I found a couple of checklists that help students evaluate um, the likelihood that a news article might be more of a fake news article rather than a legitimate news article. So um, I like this uh, checklist because it gives you kind of a question to answer and then a red flag on the answer that maybe you should look at that article more closely to see if it's um, fake or legitimate. So um, does it invoke a strong emotional response? Does it use excessive punctuation or all capital letters? Um, is it designed for easy sharing like a meme? Um, is the source well known? Is the author's name visible? So different things you can look at when looking at a website. Um, so you can kind of look at headlines on articles, see if they use all caps, if there is a person listed as the author um, or if not, and uh, maybe look up the author of a website to see. Um, you can also look at the about areas of the different websites to see if they have information about the organization that created the website and whether they have a bias or not um, the same way we did with any other websites. Again, those all capital letters look for authors' names. Um, the checklist gives a good place um, to look to, uh, to see if a website might be um, leaning towards more fake news or leaning towards a more legitimate news article. Something else I have students do is to Google the name, do a Google search of the name of the news source and the words editorial guidelines or editorial standards. And often um, for legitimate news sources, you will find um, extensive um, writings about their editorial standards, so what they expect as far as fairness, um, impartiality, um, and what they expect from their journalists. And uh, the presence of a document can help students, again, trust that the information on the website um, might be at least held to um, a certain standard as far as um, the legitimacy of the information contained there. Um, if you want more information about uh, looking at fake news and lesson ideas, um, Larry Perlazzo is an ESL teacher who um, writes articles for the New York Times and also um, has a, a, a section with lesson ideas for fake news and lots more resources and I'll have that linked on my um, page for this workshop. So you can take a look and there's deep links, there's links and links with lots of great lesson ideas um, and websites you can show your students.